Welcome back to OA Optimism. Let's dive into Why It Hurts Part 3. It's much more about sensitivity than damage. We gotta learn about pain first. Pain, it's like an alarm. Problem with alarms, they don't tell us much about the problem. They go off, they don't tell us where the problem is, they don't tell us how bad the problem is, they just want us to do something. Get out of the house, maybe. Maybe there's a fire, maybe there's smoke, maybe there's something else. Just do something, that's it. Alarms kind of suck. They're kind of useless beyond yelling at you and scaring the crap out of you. So pain sometimes is like that as well. Take a heart attack, for example. Don't have one. Just consider what happens when someone has a heart attack. Your heart, part of it's dying. Where do you feel pain if you're lucky? You feel pain in your jaw, you feel it down your arm, you might feel it in your, in your chest. So here you go, part of your heart is dying and you feel pain in your jaw. Some people feel pain in their back. How stupid is that, right? Your heart, dying, you have low back pain. Some people feel sick, they feel unwell. Right? Again, your heart, it's dying. You wanna go home and lie down and have a cup of soup. Right? Our pain system, our alarm system, not very good in some ways. And we can see how this is relevant to knee and hip pain. So pain, it's not a good indicator. Well, it's certainly not a one-to-one -one indicator of how much joint damage you have. We saw that in the other videos, right? You can have joint changes, you can have no pain. You can have lots of joint changes and you can have a little bit of pain. You can have minimal joint changes and you have lots of pain. So pain, not a one-to-one -one ratio. It's not a one-to-one -one ratio with the problems going on in the joint. Pain is far too complex. And we're gonna have lots of uh, videos on this as well. But for this video, we're just gonna talk about how pain is multidimensional and how it's influenced by a number of factors. So some of the factors we wanna think about with the pain that we can have with our knee and our hip would be your joint. Yep, those joint changes, they matter sometimes. The stress in your life, the emotional stress, physical stress that we can experience. Your chemistry, your chemical makeup at the level of the joint and throughout your whole system. Your genetics, we have a genetic predisposition to how sensitive we are. Your worrying, Pain and worrying about pain, you know, makes sense. But unfortunately, when we worry about things, we can make the pain worse. Your mental health. These are all factors that influence how much pain we have. Pain being so complex and multidimensional uh, seems odd, but in some ways it helps explain why we have good days and why we have bad days. It's why you can have flare-ups with uh, very little change in your life. It doesn't always mean that your joint is more damaged when you have flare-ups. It also means you can have less pain on some days uh, and it makes no sense. You might have been ridiculously physically active the day before and went hiking and got lost and you walked two hours more than you thought or what, than what you planned uh, and so you loaded your joint up. You haven't done that in months or years, but today you can feel great. So pain is kind of odd. It's why the amount of change on your x-ray doesn't tell us how much pain you have. Changes in the cartilage, plus all the variables that influence pain, can increase chemicals both in the joint and in your entire system that can sensitize you. That chemical sensitivity and interact with other factors, and then you might have pain. We use the cup analogy to understand this. Let's take a look at that cup analogy now. Let's talk about the cup analogy for pain. So this is you, but you as a cup. And here are a number of potential contributors to pain. So let's go ahead and fill that cup. We can have joint changes. We can have joint chemicals. We can have worry. So here, you are okay. Your cup is not overflowing and you can be pain free, but life adds more. Lack of activity, poor sleep, and too much too soon. And what do we get? We get that cup overflowing. And when your cup overflows, 
you might have pain. So to help yourself, you want to ask three big questions. What's in my cup? What are the potential contributors to pain? Then we want to ask, what can I do to decrease those contributors? Or can I decrease those contributors? At the same time, it's not fair to say that that cup has to be empty and that all of the stressors in our life have to be gone. So we ask our third question, how can I build a bigger cup? So if you build a bigger cup, or if you decrease what's in the cup, you can positively impact your pain. So we touched on how pain is multidimensional, and we kind of focused on the negative things. What increases our pain? Well, because pain is multidimensional, it also means that a number of factors can decrease our pain. Pain can be influenced by exercise, physical activity, better sleep, confidence and optimism, hobbies, stress management, and coping education. Our next video series will explore the principles of, re of recovery. So these are the things that you can actually do to help yourself. So until then, I'm Greg Lehman, and this is OA Optimism.